everybody. Uh, it's me, Lady Ada. Um, I hope you guys all had a great morning at DEF CON if, you just, uh, if you're tuning in from there. Um, for those who may not be aware, this morning at DEF CON, um, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced uh, a new chip, and we love new chips from Raspberry Pi. Um, basically, if you are a fan of the RP2040, you're going to love this new chip. It's the RP2350. And they also released the Pico 2, which is um, their dev board, low cost dev board, only a couple bucks, now featuring the RP2350 uh, microcontroller. So it's kind of just like the same shape and capabilities um, for the peripherals on those pins. It's a drop in compatible, but it has a much more powerful chip. So let's talk about what is new in the RP2350. So there's two versions of the RP2350. Let's go to the overhead. And here's, here's the alpha version of the Pico 2. Cute little guy. Um, so there's two chips available for the RP2350. Oh, sorry. I got the same, two of the same thing. Okay. This other one. Okay. There's two versions. Um, you can see, I love this because some folks were like, I need more GPIO. There's the standard 60-pin uh, version, which folks are kind of familiar with, very similar to the original RP2040. And now there's a much bigger, much more pinout uh, available RP2350B series, which has 80 pins. Both of these have the same basic peripherals and core, uh, but this one does have more analog to digital inputs. I think it has eight, and this one has four of them. Um, for the chips themselves, the difference is instead of having a dual core Cortex M0, they now have dual core Cortex M33. So it has floating point unit. So it's going to be a lot faster for doing anything with math or science or AI or, you know, circuit Python, micro Python related. Um, it's also got twice as much RAM. So it's got 520 kilobytes instead of 264. So twice as much SRAM. You still need to use an external flash chip. Um, to, so you can see that here. But what's nice about the Pico 2 is it now comes with four megabytes of flash, not two megabytes, which is great because uh, you, you know with all that extra processor speed, you're gonna want um, more space to store your program. Um, the Cortex M33 runs, I think at like 150, 160 megahertz. But from our basic um, bench speeding, uh, bench testing for CircuitPython, it's about twice as fast, just the processor being a much more modern processor. It's a, the new M33 um, and that floating point unit and the optimizations. There's also two RISC-V cores inside. I think they're called Hazard 3 cores. I'll note you can't run them at the same time as the ARM cores. You can either have ARM core or you can have RISC-V. So pick your poison. But I think if you want to experiment with RISC-V, it's great because there's a lot of good peripherals. Um, you still get the you know two UARTs, two SPI ports, two I2C ports, lots of PWMs. Um, for folks who love the PIOs, uh, there are now three PIO blocks instead of two. So that's great. You get, I think, 12 total PIO uh, machine, um, state machines. Um, there's also a really neat new peripheral called HSTX, which we brought out on our two new boards that we released. This is the Feather with the HSTX port. Um, so the Feather's got the RP2350, it's got the smaller chip, um, it's got 8 megabytes of flash, it's got the Stemma QT, it's got a spot for PS RAM. So right, this chip also has support for external PS RAM for 2 or 8 megabytes, uh, we've got that working in CircuitPython. Stemma QT, I2C, and then the SWD debug port, a little NeoPixel, uh, the buck power supply as recommended, um, battery charging, USB-C, so you can run off battery, the reset and boot pins. And then, like I said, the HSTX port. So the HSTX port's kind of interesting. Basically, uh, for folks who've been using PIO to do DVI output, like you want to connect to an HDMI monitor, or you want to connect to like um, RGB LED matrices or NeoPixels, and you're, you're blasting data out, it's a transmission for your data out, um, and you historically used PIO, you might be like, oh, I have to use all my PIO to do DVI, and I don't have any PIO left over to do you know, CAN bus or whatever. Um, the HSTX port is a separate than PIO peripheral that's specifically designed to drive high-speed outputs like DVI or NeoPixel or RGB matrix. Um, and it's separate, and you don't have to overclock the chip because it's like a separate peripheral, um, and it can do like high-speed um, RAM to digital output. So this pinout that we have on the Feather, and also it's on the Metro, if you click on the Metro, 
uh, over here is three lanes. So it's got clock plus minus data zero plus minus data one, data two in the same format as the Raspberry Pi 5, which has the 22 pin CSI DSI connector. We use that same pinout so you can use the same cables. Um, obviously, you're not going to be able to drive a 1080p display. There's just not enough RAM on this. But maybe with PS RAM and some like funky hacking, somebody's going to get that working. Um, for more advanced hacking, we've got the Metro. It's Arduino Shield uh, shape compatible. Um, it's good for high power stuff. It's got uh, DC input, the HSTX, USB-C, reset button. Okay, you go back. DC port. Um, Stemma, well, you can't see it. Stemma QT, uh, NeoPixel. One thing is, I will say, um, we're having signups available for the Metro, but it's not going to be available um, immediately because I, I want to redesign this to use the 80-pin chip instead of the 60-pin chip so that there's no pin sharing and you have more GPIO. Plus, I, I really like that there's eight analog pins and I want to have A4 and A5 be available. So the Metro is going to be redesigned, but the Feather is, is pretty much done. You can see I when I ordered the boards, I didn't want to sneak out what the part number was. I just called it the RP2. Also got a micro SD card and the SPI port. Uh, you are you can switch between uh, logical pinning or you are pinning. Um, yeah, so these are the two boards we're going to come out with. Of course, we're, we are going to release stuff like uh, the KB2350 for like uh, Pro Micro compatible usage on um, keyboards, um, a cutie pie, itsy bitsy maybe even like a grand central using the 80 pin chip so you have like a lot of gpio um we're starting with these two boards and of course the pico 2 um those are going to be available for signups as soon as we get them in the shop and then um i know that the defcon badge is also 2350 based uh we have a sleeper agent um who's on site in las vegas um, hopefully won't get too drunk or um, get tossed into the Alexis Park pool. And so we'll be able to get a board definition out for um, the DEF CON badge so people can use all of the really great CircuitPython libraries, the TDUSB support, uh, and more um, with DEF CON to do cool hacking. I think, I think CircuitPython is the easiest way to do um, hardware hacking and prototyping. So that's all coming soon. This is like just dropped. Um, you know, I know Scott's also going to be doing a deep dive on Friday if you want to learn more about the internals of how he ported CircuitPython over to RP2350. Um, I love new chips. It's exciting. Twice as fast, twice the RAM, more flash on the Pico 2, HSTX um, peripheral, PS RAM support, um, you know, RISC 5 cores, M33. It's got better low power support coming. It's got better security trust zone support for those who want to put uh, the 2350 chip in products. Um, a really great upgrade to the 2040, and you're going to see it coming out in a bunch of new Adafruit products. Uh, if you have any requests, of course, put them in the comments. It was great to chat with you. Thanks, everybody.